Hello YouTube! This month we are working on a Christmas gift for my sister. She is absolutely in love with the Harry Potter franchise. And because I gave my twin brother a painting for Christmas, it should only be fair that Carrie gets one too. So my wife and I scoured the internet looking for inspiration and came across a digital painting someone did from the Goblet of Fire. It was very detailed and extremely well done. The main focus was the castle and the mountain landscape. Mountains are a new territory for me, and I haven't painted clouds against the blue sky since the mural I painted in my daughter's room. Jumping right into it, I again did not do any pre-planning charcoal for this piece. A scary thought, really. But I had a deadline. Christmas was but two weeks away and I had a lot of work to do. The first portion of this painting was wet on wet technique. I started with the sky and clouds as they were the most distant things that were going to get layered on top of as the painting progressed. I mixed up a variant of light grays, greens, and browns for the distant mountain tops and peaks. I was taking care not to get too detailed or dark, as these mountains are miles away. Too much detail here can take away from the centerpiece of the canvas, which of course was Hogwarts Castle. I blocked in my colors and just worked on getting paint everywhere. I wasn't too concerned about color out of places as it would be likely covered by more detail work later. Hogwarts Castle is like most castles, made up of cylinders, squares, and triangles. I broke the castle up into these simple shapes while I blocked in color. Color was a little important, but perspective was number one on my list, as well as proportion and scale. I took some liberties and adjusted when things didn't quite match up with my reference material. That's okay, this is our world, and if there's a mistake too far along, then it was just meant to be. My placement of certain towers in relationship to the ravine and bridge were off, something pre-planning would have solved, but we're here now. Improvise, adapt, and overcome. Now the fun part, many hours into painting and now I get to bust out my tiny brushes to work on the detail and bring this to life. A lot of times in shading, it's the colors you don't see or the colors that your brain blocks out that makes some image pop. The beige cement towers are a perfect example of this. I'm using a grayscale for shading but adding in yellow and sky blue as highlights and blending. It gives the tower walls that added texture and reflectivity and dirtiness of ancient stone. I moved on to this church-like structure that appears to have a lot of fine details, pillars, crenellations, and many spires. I believe it's the main hall that was portrayed so many times in the film. This area is one of the most sunlit spots and brightest faces of the castle. It also is the exact center of the painting. Highlights and darks are added to create the windows and definition. I make relatively quick work of this spot and move on. From here it's rinse and repeat. Oftentimes, not cleaning my brush until I have to work on the spires or the roof areas. This helps with a lot of blending and keeping it uniform throughout.
I completed the castle and moved on to the higher detailed foreground scenery. I had mapped this area out with my color blotches from earlier. I had to resist the temptation to add higher detail because of wet on wet is a recipe for muddiness and not getting exactly what I wanted. When I started this area, the paint had been dried for a week or two. This allowed me to recreate that fine detail one sees in individual boulders, water, trees, and the road leading up to Hogwarts. The bird soaring really helped with the scale of this castle. The white feathered highlights helps bring another layer of dimension to this piece. I added a faint amount of light gray brush strokes to give the appearance of fog along the banks too. Adding the highlights and a few darker turquoise lines to the water is all I needed to give the feel of a river in motion. In my reference image, the three hooded figures are the school department heads from the visiting competitors in the film. I'm replacing these people with the main trio, Harry, Hermione, and Ron. I had to improvise a little bit as the reference material I had was of the kids looking at the camera. For the most part, I wanted to get Harry's clothes accurate and each of their heads of hair correct. You can easily discern whom is supposed to be who when I'm complete. I had a wonderful time painting this piece. I'm proud of the way things turned out, and I know it will be enjoyed by many. My next painting is going to be a commissioned Star Wars Clone Wars painting. Until next time, take care.